Okay, my name is Paul LaRudy. I'm a retired academic and I live in California uh, where I'm active in several nonprofit organizations having to do with human rights, mainly in the Middle East. So what brought you here to Syria? Um, this is my second time coming here, but uh, Syria is becoming the focus of many of the problems in the Middle East. The, the central uh, problem in the Middle East is the issue of uh, Israel-Palestine, uh, Zionism and its effect on its neighbors in the region and the, uh, the other nations, the great powers that align themselves uh, with one or the other sides of this and it's a it's a big problem right now that focus uh, well the focus used to be for example uh, on Iraq uh, and at one point in Libya and now now it's the focus is is mainly in Syria so in order to address these problems uh, it's necessary to try to find a solution for Syria and the problem of Syria is really horrifying the number of casualties and the effect on the civilian population is terrifying, so it's hard not to be involved. So you being an American, how would you describe this, this overall situation here, here in Syria? Well, it hasn't dis, uh, descended into chaos the way uh, Iraq did, or Somalia, or even Libya. It, um, the, and I, I think the only reason that it hasn't, because in some areas of Syria the chaos is terrible. Uh, the killing, the savagery, the, the, it's, it's horrifying. Uh, but the only reason it hasn't totally collapsed, I think, is because the Syrian government still remains, uh, has a lot of support here and remains strong enough thanks to the support of uh, Russia and I Iran largely uh, and so they've been able to maintain uh, their support here but in the areas where that control, government control is lacking uh, the effects on the population have been terrible so yesterday we went to a refugee camp here in Latakia and you heard the stories of the woman, women. What were their stories about? Well, um, we went of course to two places. One was about the recent attack on uh, the villages to the north of Latakia, uh, all of them uh, Armenian uh, uh, towns. And the other one was f uh, those from other regions of uh, of Syria, including Idlib and uh, Haram and others. And the stories of these in particular, the latter group, were some of the most horrifying I've ever heard. Uh, uh, pregnant women with their, their bellies being sliced, sliced open and, and uh, being held, uh, the rest of them who survived, being held for 72 days in terrible conditions with very little food or water and the husbands being and and the men in the families being slaughtered in in large numbers so that now they estimate that only a quarter of them still are left we, we did speak to mostly we spoke to the women but we also spoke to the, uh, the some of the men survivors and they talk of uh, walking 70 kilometers uh, with very little water, no food, and uh, over mountains and rough territory because they had to avoid the roads, and this is the only way they could survive. But uh, what happened on the border there uh, with, for example, uh, stories of children being slaughtered in front of their, their parents uh, in order to get compliance, or simply because they were they were of the wrong um, religion or because they were perceived not to be supportive of the fighters and uh, so it's uh, I mean it's not exactly from from the point of view of the fighters what are they trying to achieve they're not exactly going to win support that way